What's up guys, it's Jen. Welcome to South of the Blue Line. Tonight we're doing something a little different called One Take Wednesday, where I literally just film and everything stays in. There won't be a South of the Blue Line logo, there won't be an end slate, nothing's getting cut out. So yeah, here we go. Last time we talked, the boys played Nashville and lost 5-2 to two the night before Thanksgiving. It was ugly, it sucked, it wasn't pretty bleh. So we catch back up with our gentlemen on Black Friday, and what do they do? Get us a pretty little two point, two to one win. It was beautiful. I was happy. My friends were happy. It was a great game. And here's what made this game so much more interesting than regular games. Well, I mean, it's a regular game too, but just hear me out. Mr. Asa Lindell gets credit for two goals but only actually gets one goal in the entire game. So hear me out. First period, Vancouver scores, blah, 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 blah. Second period, Asa Lindell knocks in this beautiful shot. And Radic Fox actually tipped it in. So they first announced that it's Asa's goal, but after video review, it turns out that the goal was tipped in by Radic. The puck was tipped in by Radic to the goal. Therefore, Radic gets his second goal of the season and Mr. Lindell only gets Mr. Lindell only gets the assist so hey a point for you Asa points point then in the same period Asa Lindell decides you know what I don't just want an assist I want my first career NHL goal so he takes it and the beauty of this first career NHL goal for Mr. Lindell is that they announced it and everybody got hype and then they took it from him and then he gets one anyways he kind of is like take that hockey gods I'm getting my first career NHL goal tonight so he did and it was beautiful the funny thing is the guy who sits next to me was literally like he didn't want that goal anyways he wants the game winning goal not some measly tying goal not to discredit Radic's goal any further but you gotta admit that was pretty awesome that he totally called it and I was just like okay so you can predict the future I need you to do that more often for us to win more often okay thanks but yeah and even when Radic was interviewed he admitted he, he kind of felt bad about stealing Ace's first career NHL goal from him but he got one anyways and his was better because it was the game winner and not the tire sorry Radic all right, so we move along in our life to the boys take a nice little two-day vacation. And with the two-day vacation comes the back-to-back. -back. So it starts in St. Louis. First period, St. Louis scores. Woohoo! Second period, Jamie Alexiak. Oh, yeah. And it was pretty too. Also in the second period, St. Louis, whatever. Third period, Jamie Ben with the power play. Oh yeah, excellent work. Then, also in the third period, another St. Louis goal, giving them the lead three to two. Jamie Alexiak again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In St. Louis that night, if your name wasn't Jamie, when, if you played on the Stars and your name wasn't Jamie, you were not getting a goal. Sadly, we went to OT and we lost. You know that song, OT, OT, never much love when we go OT? Yeah, that's clearly about us right now and I'm kind of sick of it. So can we figure out where the love needs to come from for us to get the OT wins? Because we've got one so far and I'd like to keep it going and get more. Stupid Tarasenko. Alright, and because of the back-to-back, -back, Tuesday night, we pop over to Detroit. And we lose 3-1. to one. Asa Lindell gets his second career NHL goal. Excellent job, sir, in the first period. And then the rest of the game is Detroit the whole time. Larkin... Uh, let's see. Nope. Wrong game. Go back. Oh, come on. 
Okay, no, 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 wrong game. There it is. Okay, so the beauty of Mr. Lindell's first career initial goal was that he worked so hard for it. Then he gets his second career NHL goal in the first 16 seconds of the game. Literally, zero colon 16 seconds. No minutes, 16 seconds into the game. It took Mr. Larkin almost the entire period to score, as in like 40 seconds left in the period, he scores. Then Mantha scores in the second. And ugh, Steve Ott. Bleh. He scores in the third. He is one of the former stars that I have not liked. I do not like him anymore. He is out the window. Done. Bye. Alright, so our boys take a nice little breather. And they have a game on December 1st. In Pittsburgh. Hi, Trevor. First period, Devin Shore. Nicely done. Second period, Tyler Sagan. On the power play. Tyler Sagan slump over. Moving on with our lives. Third period, nothing from us. The rest of the game, pretty much Pittsburgh the entire time. None of them, Trevor. So we're moving on. The boys get a nice little breather for a night, pop back in on Saturday the 3rd, and where do our boys pop into but, uh, Colorado. Hey, Colorado Avalanche. Okay, I'm a superstitious person from time to time, and I made the mistake more than once of picking the stars over the team that they're playing in the Enterprise Hat Trick Challenge, which is where you pick three, you pick between two players or you pick yes or no if a player is going to score or if a team is going to have a certain number of goals or more like three or four or whatever and so on this day I self-sacrificed and I took the L in my hat trick challenge and only got two of my three questions right and I picked the avalanche because every time I pick the stars we lose so what did we do I picked the avalanche and we win three to nothing First period, Curtis McKenzie. Second period, Tyler Sagan with another power play goal. And then just for kicks and giggles, Patrick Eves. Oh yeah, into an empty net. When are teams going to learn not to put a empty net in front of the Dallas Stars? We led the entire league in empty nets last season. I think we know a thing or two about how to put a puck into an empty net. And so that brings us around to the boys' lovely little home game on December 6th. Road trip was nice. The boys had fun, I'm sure. Not really, because we lost three of the four and only pulled out three of the seven points we needed and we took on the Calgary Flames at home oh the Calgary Flames the tire fire that you are your logo literally looks like a tire on fire tire fire just saying first period Curtis McKenzie oh Curtis you've been on a nice little Hot streak, huh, buddy? Shooting and shooting and shooting. Proud of you. Keep it up. We like having you in Dallas. Second period comes and Johnny Gaudreau scores. <sighs> so, during the game last night, third, sorry, finished scoring. Third period, who was it? Monaghan. Game over. Calgary wins 2-1. to one. At some point last night and right now I cannot recall and I can't find the highlight anywhere that's ticking me off we had a nice little scuffly situation right in front of Calgary's net and we kick the puck in kicked it in so they're like oh it's not a goal because you kicked it in here's the problem we didn't actually kick it in it was deflected off of one of our players skates 
which is completely legal. He didn't swing his foot forward. If you find the highlight, please put the link below because I'm getting pissed off about this. We didn't kick it in. I don't care what anybody says. That was not a kick in. Then Calgary's all like, we want a challenge for goaltender interference. I'm like, first of all, first of all, they already called it not a goal. So you're just trying to get the penalty? Really childish. So they review it. Not goaltender interference. Why? Because Calgary's defenseman shoved our players into the crease. Unlike the goal from Monaghan, where the player was clearly standing in the crease. Now, Mr. Kelly Forbes, who is a genius and we love him for it, caught that a Calgary player went off sides on one of the goals that they got credited for earlier in the second period. But because we caught it, no goal for you, Calgary. Too bad we couldn't pull out the win. It sucked. All right, guys. So we've gone south of the blue line on one take Wednesday. <laughs> wow, that was terrible. One take Wednesday. The boys have quite the schedule coming up. We've got Nashville again, and hopefully, because it's at home, we can actually beat Nashville this time. Come on, load the schedule. Wasting clock time here. So then we will travel to Philly, from Philly to Chicago on a back-to-back, -back, which I hate playing Chicago on a back-to-back -back as much as I hate playing Detroit. Then Anaheim, the New York Rangers, and Philadelphia again. So, Nashville at home, Philly and Chicago on the road, Anaheim at home, New York Rangers at home, Philadelphia at home, and St. Louis Blues at home. When we meet up again, I will cover those games. I hope you guys have a fabulous night. Go Stars!